just talked about ego. Yes. For me, the ego is the most terrible thing there is on this planet. And I think it's the source of all negativity. Some people tell me then, no, that's not true, because when I do not have ego in the company, they all would hurt me and they would do not respect me. And I always say, e not having an ego does not mean that you let everybody go over your borders. Self-love, self-love, just God is only love and he loves himself most of all. So let's define our terms. Ego, in a general sense, is your awareness of the outside world and the inside world and how that relates. So healthy ego is different than negative ego. Healthy ego is aware of what happens and responds appropriately. So somebody spills wine at your party, you say, oh, wine was spilled, let's get a towel, let's clean it up. Negative ego, that person did it on purpose to ruin my party. They don't like me, they're punishing me. It tells you stories. And the stories always have, negative ego has two primary components to it. And to understand this helps you to deal with it. The two components are self-pity and self-importance. I'm better than, I'm less than. That's the whole game. I'm the most important person in the world, but they're not treating me good enough. That's self-pity and self-importance in one sentence. The healthy ego is able to take in information and not have judgments. The negative ego is constantly judging, judging yourself and judging other people. And the negative ego, as you said, is the source of the suffering on this planet. But the ego came in as an important function in the evolution of consciousness. I'm a human being. I'm different than the animals. I'm important. Yes, that was a valuable stage of the evolution, but when people get stuck there in self-importance, it's also tied in with that self-pity. And self-pity is the most destructive vibration because the subtle self-pity is, Oh, they're not treating me good enough. They don't love me good enough. I'm unappreciated, misunderstood, overburdened, innocent of wrongdoing, unfairly treated, angry at God. And so what are they? Subtle terrorists. And the reason I say they're terrorists is because if you think about who hurt you the most in your life, who really hurt you, it's the person who made you feel like your love wasn't valuable. Your love didn't have impact. Your love didn't matter. That's the person who hurt you the most. That's terrorism. But what do they call the terrorists? They call them martyrs who blow themselves up. They're the martyrs. They're the wonderful people who sacrifice themselves for others. No, they're terrorists. The terrorists, they harm other people. They don't care about the impact that they have on other people. And it's martyrhood which is the most destructive form of negative ego. The self-pity, you can see them coming from a mile away. You, here's five dollars, just get out of my life, go away, okay? You just wanna, but it's the one that feels, this is a subtle terrorist, the unappreciated, misunderstood, unfairly treated, overburdened, innocent of responsibility. I didn't really hurt you. Angry at God, I'm unfairly treated, this isn't, uh, and so those are the people that cause the most damage. But you don't have to be afraid. You simply have to stop it. You have to identify the negative ego. And that's one of the things we talk about in my self-created health workshop. And I also touch on it on my new book, Hacking the Law of Attraction, because we can contain it. Once you understand, once you understand the game that's being played, you can say, wait a second, self-pity is a life raft made of lead. It's taking you right down to the bottom of the ocean of pain and suffering. So instead of being tied into the self-pity, you raise your vibration, you raise your joy, you let the future love you, you become transformed in that love, and then you have a healthy ego because, oh, I'm having an adventure. And instead of feeling like you have to fight, defend, protect, and play the ego warrior games of it's a dangerous world out there and I have to be very careful and I have to, to struggle and succeed and push and manipulate and dominate and control. 
No. We can allow and create and learn and grow and heal and romance and play and have fun and create this extraordinary adventure. So I wanted to see the paradigm shift from the peaceful warrior to the adventurer. Because why the heck do you want to be in a war? You could be in any, any movie at all and you would choose a war so you can be a peaceful warrior and have courage and defend and protect and not be angry when you're slaying your enemy. Why have enemy? Why be in a war when you could be in an adventure or a romance or a comedy? This could be a fun experience, but you're choosing a war instead? Nah, let's not play that game. So we get to choose the reality. We create our reality and there is no fine print. But this blows people's minds because it kills the victim. And the victim is the ego. The ego wants to play victim or wants to play punisher. So the avoidance of responsibility plays into blame and punishment, self-righteous anger, avoidance of responsibility. It plays into ego guarantees that I have to have a guarantee that things will be better before I give up my suffering and my pain and my anger. I have to know it'll be better on the other side before I give it up. There's no guarantees. It's the self-pity, the self-importance. It's the fear of loss of the past. These are the games that the negative ego is going to want to play. And these are the secondary gains that people want to have in place of a better life where they're filled with joy, love, and creative expression. And so that's what I'm wanting to share with people that it's possible to get to the other side and be genuine within yourself where you're not going to play those blame and punishment games and the victim and all that bullshit because it's just not needed. Yeah, so wonderful. And I mean, I, I, I had a title of one video, it was Traumatized People Traumatized. Hurt People Hurt, hurt people, people. Hurt People. Yes, the it's same. true. And uh, some people <laughs> really have, yeah, they want to be the victim. Oh yeah, it's their identity. Some energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's their identity to be a victim. Yes. It's their calling card. Here, I'm Mr. Victim. I'm always the one who gets the negative thing. I'm always the one in the longest row. I'm always the one who, has, who gets problems. If you meet somebody like that, mm -hmm. there's a really good strategy. Run away. <laughs> because nobody treats me fair and I'm always uh, mistreated. Well, it's like a chain letter. You join the chain letter and sooner or later your name comes up to the top and now you're the one who's not treating them fairly. Now you're the one who's abused them. Who's and so you're going to become the person who's hurt that person. So run away because unless if you tell them they're being a victim, they're going to punish you for it. Of course. <coughs> so they don't want to hear it. So run away is the best strategy and find people to play with who want to grow and be transformed and healed. And we need more of that people. Of course. Because now at the moment we have this worldwide victim situation. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what this is. It's it's a worldwide victim network. It's the, the, the biggest network in the, on the planet. What are they doing with us? But when we learn how to change it and transform it, we have the ability to be fully ourselves and an exemplification of our higher consciousness. Thank you so much. Thank you.